Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your most visited website on the web, thelandgeek.com, and I'm thrilled, honored, privileged to have the one, the only, you know him, you love him, I love him, I'm not afraid to say it, Duran Frazier, Carlsbad, California, living the dream on the beach, Duran. Um, everything's going great, Mark. I, um, I was actually just, a, I think about 10 seconds too slow um, to do my uh, crowd applause. Um, but I brought it on there for you. There you go. Um, everything's great, Mark. Just, um, trying to stay motivated. And, and I love seeing your face because you make me ultra motivated. Yeah. Okay. So the, the theme of this podcast, it's a little bit touchy feely for us. Typically we like to go a little bit more into more technical details, but it's one we haven't really touched on. And that's how to stay motivated because in, you know, whether it's the land business or any business or any project, any endeavor you do, uh, you're going to get kicked in the mouth, right? And when that happens, you've got to have something in place to keep you motivated so that you get back up and continuing driving forward. Does that make sense? Are you kidding me? I mean... I have to have motivation to wake up in the morning every day. So yes, of course it makes sense. Well, what, what motivates you? Everything. There's nothing that doesn't motivate me, Mark. No, I know, but like in, in, you know, in general, like how, how do you stay motivated? Like, do you set goals? Do you, uh, do you have some kind of routine? Do you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, routine based in my daily life. I wake up and I, generally either one help with the kids because uh we we have one that likes to wake himself up at 5 a.m and uh wake everyone else up with him so um i'll get up and i'll help every morning um with the kids um try to spend time quality time with the kids interacting you know it's actually funny because you know i think some people um would say that kids aren't motivating i have a five-year-old that if he doesn't motivate you there's something wrong um he's a firecracker and the minute <laughs> i wake up He's a firecracker for at least a good hour. He doesn't wake up on the, he generally doesn't wake up on the right side of the bed. So he's a challenge, but he's a challenge that sort of motivates me to kind of make things happen and get things going in the morning. Um, but, but he's my, but my routine goes from watching the kids, let my wife sleep in for a little bit if I can, um, going in, and then I go in to get my emails done every morning. Um, I, you know, it's funny is one of the things that, that motivates me is actually getting in my email box and seeing kind of getting excited as, as to who emailed me the night before, what, what is on my agenda for the day, looking at my calendar kind of just seeing what new people I'm connecting with, what new ideas am I working with, what am I, and, and at the same time sort of, you know, putting into perspective what what sort of um, priorities are going to make me money and, and are achievable and that kind of stuff. But I'm not, I'm not much of a goals. Like I don't write down, we, we've talked about goals in the past. I don't write down goals like, hey, in six months from now, I want to be driving a Tesla like you, Mark. Right. Um, I'm, 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 more, um, I'm, I'm more focused on today um, and I generally have, like, if I'm working with a business model, I'll have like a, a five-year plan or a strategy or, or, and I'll have, and I do implement just so I, just so you understand like with, with, with landhub.com, there's, there's milestones that I've got set up until the end of the year. I mean, those, so are, are, but those are like goals. A milestone is a yes. goal. But that's in, that's in a particular business. I have to do that. So yes, like, if that makes sense. And I think the difference between me and, and most three or four things at once. Okay. So not everything has milestones, if that makes sense. Right. I mean, I mean, I hate to pick on you, but pick on me. I'm going to pick on you a little bit because there's Please. there's something you said in 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 that story that kind of resonated with me. Contradicts. What's that? Contradicts itself. No, no, no. It just resonated with me because I, I'm just like that in the sense like the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is check my email. But what I found is that it's actually becoming a huge distraction and huge problem in my life. And I actually did a coffee talk video on this. And because what's happened for me, and maybe, and, and you know, I'm not picking on you, but 
you may have a totally different way of viewing email than I do. But for me, I'm constantly, I, was, I mean, I should say I'm not now. I'm detoxing. But I was constantly checking my email like it was a slot machine, right? And I was, gonna, I was looking for that good email, even though, and so it was like this neurotic, panicky feeling all the time. Did I get a good email? Did I get a good email? What's going on in my email? And instead of getting real work done and productive work done, I was constantly distracted. Like any time that I could check my email, even if it wasn't a really good time to check, I would do that. So now, literally all day, all night, my phone is on do not disturb. And if you're not in my favorites on my contacts, you your phone call, your phone call won't even get to me. So during an hour a day, uh, I literally chunk and put into my schedule, check email, respond to email. And then the rest of the day, I don't check it. And I feel so much better. That's my thing. On uh, uh, okay. Interesting. And, and it's funny because it's funny you say that because about an hour and a half ago, my wife and I had this talk. And she goes, you know, this woman was telling me that she just checks her email once a day and that's just how she operates. And I said, you know, that's interesting because – there's a little bit of a dynamic there. There's, I'm a, I am very, very, very particular about communication. I like to make sure that I communicate immediately to somebody. Just, that's just, it's almost like a, a pet peeve. I, I, you know, if I send an email, I don't get a response for a week. I, you're literally, you're, you're done. It's like casting a demon out. Like you're, you, I want nothing to do with you. No, no wait I'm a second. A, a week is a lot, but 20, I think 24 hours is reasonable. You're right. But if I, for, and again, we're different, but if I have something, a lot of things that I have, like I'll have a, okay, let's just talk about a lead in a, for example. Okay. Somebody sends you a lead for a piece of land. Okay. And, and nine times out of 10, that lead may just happen to, to contact 10 people. So guess what? If you're late to the party, you may lose that client. And I, I 100% believe that that, that could and does happen. If you, if you do act, once a day at one, at one point, if you get back to somebody at 11 a.m. and that person that you had emailed the day before doesn't get back to you until 12, now all of a sudden you have another day. So there's like a two-day spread before you can actually get back in touch with that person. And he or she may be on and, and already closing a deal on a piece of land. Yeah but, so, yeah, but at that point, once you've already kind of planned for that scenario and actually be flexible enough to say, okay, I'm actually expecting an email here because it's time sensitive. I mean, that's completely different than our regular. I mean, how often do you really have such time sensitive emails coming in? I rarely do. Well, I'm, well, here's here. Just for example, I have, I, I generally have three or four meetings, conference calls each day. Okay. So I'm a busy guy. Right. And, and we'll, we'll get to that. Whether, whether or not they, they are, smart is another conversation. I, I take meetings that generally aren't always ones that are priorities for me, but I like to help people. And that we've talked about this again in, in the past, but, but at the same time, I have people canceling meetings. I have people, all sorts of things that happen within my daily schedule that if I didn't have email, I wouldn't have access to that. So, well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's, but that's your calendar. That's not email. Yeah, but it's, that's not the yeah, slot machine. Is, that's no, not the neurotic sure, panicky feeling. Sure. I'm missing out who on interacts, something. Who interacts with my calendar? I, I, my, my, the people I'm meeting with don't have a way to interact with my calendar. But no, but you know, okay, at that time I have to communicate with somebody. That's Do different they? than just constantly checking your email. Hey, right? I, I think you should, okay. I think you should try the detox. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I am 100% okay by one. I mean, in fact, it, it would, it would help me from a stress perspective, but I believe there could be certain things that I'm missing. So, and there may be little nuggets here or there that like 95% of the emails I could get back to the next day, maybe 98%. But there's that 2% that I, that I fear if I leave hanging um, could end up being that low hanging fruit that I miss and that I could have nabbed as a client, if that makes sense. Well, why don't you try it and just see and see no! if it really No, no, I mean, who, who wants to operate in fear? You're not motivating me right now. You're All right. Let, okay. Let, let's hard. motivate you. All right. Here's seven steps to staying motivated, okay? And this is from uh, the motivational guy of the generation, Tony Robbins. So number one is set a goal and visualize it down to the most minute detail. 
see it, feel it, visualize it. This is what elite athletes do. So that's number one. Uh, you and I really don't do that, though, do you? You don't do that. Dude, elite athletes, all they do is take HGH and then just and that, that motivates them. Okay, number two. <laughs> Ma make a list of the reasons you want to accomplish the goal. So because it's so easy to kind of get distracted and blown off course, um, you kind of need this, they call it like success insurance. So you kind of, you know, engage your brain more actively by writing down all the reasons you want to accomplish that goal, right? So you're, yep. you're taking that goal and making more of a, a mental connection to it. Uh, yep. and then number three, and I really like this one a lot, and I do this. Uh, and when, I'd be curious if you do this is break the goal down into smaller pieces and set intermediary targets and rewards. So this is what they call chunking. And uh, there's a bunch of variations on this concept. But, you know, Tony Robbins would basically say a major source of stress in our lives comes from the feeling that we have an impossible number of things to do. And if you take on a project and try to do the whole thing all at once, you're going to be overwhelmed. So neuroscience tells us to take each task and break it down into even smaller pieces, which triggers our brains uh, in a reward center because we're getting these little things down. We feel good. We got it done. And we get this feel-good chemical dopamine. Do you do that? Do you break things down into chunks, small pieces? Um, I do. I do. It depends on what it is. I do. I do a little bit of compartmentalizing here and there. Um, if that's what you're referring to. Um, but, but I, I do, um, I, you know, and it's interesting you say that because there was one, one thing in my life that was a little, a uh, little tragic. My, my best friend, um, took his life about, uh, six, five months ago. And yeah, I, I and remember that. It's I, crazy. And I struggled, I struggled with it for about two months. I mean, it was a tough struggle for me. Um, I mean, I moved, I moved on. I have, a, I have a wife and kids and I have to focus, but, but losing someone like that close to you. And, and I mean, this is a guy that I talked to an hour the day before um, he passed away. Uh, in fact, and I, and I found out that he had been calling me the night um, of in the morning of, of him before he took his life. And I had my phone on airplane mode um, going, goes back to what we talk about. Like that's one of those things where, okay, what happens if my mom needs me or my sister needs me? My phone is literally on airplane mode from, seven or eight o'clock at night. And I do kind of, you know, going back to what you're saying, I actually do do some of these things that we talked that you were talking about. I, my phone is on airplane mode generally from seven at night till nine in the morning. So that's my phone. I don't, I don't, and what's great is I don't have any, any service in my house too, which helps me out quite a bit. So, uh, but with, with that situation in my life, I had to compartmentalize. I had to go, you know what? I have to mourn. And I have to, and I, but when I, as I mourn, I have to still continue on with life. And I have to put this in a certain place in my mind and my brain that allows me to continue to, to move on in life. Because if I sit here and dwell, and think about how, why, what, you know, did I, was I, you know, was I responsible? All these things that would literally destroy my life. Right. So, I, mean, I mean, obviously you're not responsible. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, I yeah, mean, you, I, I mean, but, in, in, but, you know, intellectually, you, you know that obviously, but you, well, you say, you say that, but when you're, when you're in, when you're in a moment like that, we get the phone call that your friend, you know, you know, took his life. And, and, and unfortunately at, at, the, at the time he actually survived it, but was brain dead. Um, you, I'm, I'm on my way down to the hospital. I have, was just at a trip in Lake, Lake Tahoe with my family and I'm driving down and th your brain, I mean, when you have a tragic situation like that and it, it literally is, this guy has been like a brother to me for 20 years. You, you don't, you don't really know how to react because we, unless you're in that situation, right? Like unless you're diagnosed with cancer, you don't know what it's like to have cancer. Like you just don't know, right? Like what's it like what's it like to be given, you know, to be given, you know, to, to have your life cut short or potentially cut short or a doctor giving you, you know, some news that you don't want to hear. Like, we don't know that. So it's really hard to empathize, but yes, intellectually you understand it's not my, it's not my fault, but then you also could, could I have helped him? Could I have done one more thing that could have prevented him from getting his life? So, but, but as you sort of gather your thoughts and understand and, and come back to reality, you have to learn to compartmentalize that, but just like anything else with a business or like I have, I have little, like little ideas that I, that I've compartmentalized. Like I, I think I've, you know, I, we talked about it before, but a little 
real estate idea that was based on charity, giving giving uh, a good portion of, of the commission from a real estate deal back to back to a charity of, of your choice. Like these are little ideas that I've always had that just kind of sit back there. They don't ever go away because at some point what I can do is I can sort of utilize that maybe at some point down the line if I make a connection with somebody who I feel like, ah, th- this could be a benefit here. Right, so, right. So, okay, so... Um, so you kind of, yeah, so you do do that. You, you do break things down to smaller pieces. If, that, if, that's, if that's what you're referring to, maybe I went off on a tangent. That's not what I was supposed to do there, but I think that's what, what you were saying. Right, right. And, you know, as far as your friend, I mean, that's something that we can talk about outside of the podcast, but, I mean, that's just horrific. But And if... Oh, and, I'm, if, I'm not, yeah. and I'm not bringing, I'm not, I'm not bringing that up. I, so just so you guys all understand, I'm not bringing that up as, as saying, hey, you know, like it's, it, it's, it's, you know, I'm still, I'm not struggling anymore. I've, 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 I'm at peace with it now. I'm, I'm happy. My life is great. I'm, I think I'm 100% now, um, at least 100% from, from a fact I'll always still more my friend, but, but I'm, I've moved on with life and I'm just sharing with you that, that there are these things that you have to, even as you mourn, you still continue on with life and work on your different business deals and do what you have to do, but you still compartmentalize certain things in your, in your mind so that, that allows you to sort of move forward. And right, motivate. right. You know, what's interesting about that story, though, is, is you know, obviously, I'm not, I didn't know him, but yeah. I, I'm sure I met him at your wedding. But, uh, you know, the, the difference is, is that for me, when I hear these stories that are so tragic, you know, that night when I put my children to sleep and I kiss my wife and say goodnight, you know, I am filled with, with gratitude that I have my health. My family has their health that we were given this this day. And it really allows me to sort of re-center and be more present in that particular moment uh, than just let my, my mind go forward and constantly be thinking about, okay, I need to do this in the future or, you know, what this just happened in the past and kind of be stressed. And so, you know, from every one of these terrible, horrific things that you hear about or experience, um, there is always that that point in, in life where you can say, well, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. And you yeah. know what? We are, we are really, we have a lot to be thankful for. And, you know, we're blessed. And I, I, I remember uh, I was talking to one of these guys at that real estate seminar, and he was telling me that he gave $32,000 to uh, one of his students that, you know, flipped a house and took that profit. And, and and she was like dead broke, right? But he said, look, instead of taking that $32,000 and you doing another deal with it, we're going to do something else for you. And so they flew her to Guatemala with the $32,000. And she literally took all that money and donated it to a Guatemalan orphanage personally with this group and it re- I mean tears are streaming down everyone's eyes hearing the story because even though she was you know what we would consider you know not well off in the United States compared to these kids she was wealthy wealthy beyond compare and so there's always someone else out there that is you know look we we live in this country we have first world problems we, we, we don't even understand what third world problems are until you, you experience something like that. But that's not here or there. Let's get back to uh, our, our strategies for, uh, you know, being and, and staying motivated. more motivated. Right. So, yeah. you know, number, and I will say, yeah. I will say hum, humility, just to t- touch on that for a second, humility is a good thing. Um, I, you know, I, I've obviously been through, I've lost a couple of people really close to me in life and I've never looked at it as like it, it being a life changer for me. It's always, it's actually always been what good can I take out of the bad? Like what good can I take, what, what good out of this situation? What, or what did this person do that changed people's lives? Like my friend that passed away flew to, to Burma. He, what, he snuck in with the, with the Burmese free ranges, I think is, is what it was, um, and uh, and you can actually watch watch their video on Road the, the whole movie it's a, an amazing documentary called Road of Resistance dot com um, and his name my, my friend that passed away his name is Dustin you'll see him in the movie in fact two of the five guys that are in that movie have died 
Um, they were all in their early 30s. Uh, one died from dengue fever in Thailand, and my 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 uh, my friend took his life. But um, they snuck in, and uh, these guys did so much good for people. So they went out and they gave back, and they they knew that that they had so much. Here is my friend who struggled with depression his whole life, and yet he he was still able to give back and and do and do good for other people. So I, I and you know what's funny, Mark? I'll be honest with you, that that motivates me. Like giving back to people is actually very motivating. Like, yeah, yeah, like absolutely. Watching Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, altruism is it's definitely motivational. Um, but you've got to, you've got to do the work first to be able to give back. Um, Correct. so, you know, so another strategy is to have a strategy and be prepared to change course. Right. So, yep. uh, you know, that's, there's this great quote that I love from Edison is that, you know, I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways that it won't work. And so, you know, if you're out there, making offers and going to, you know, tax sale auctions and, you know, struggling in this business, just keep at it. You you know that if you're, you know, making lowball offers every day, you're going to get deals in. And, you know, so many times we get frustrated when it just seems like we're not getting results fast enough. And you got to kind of look at it from 10,000 feet and, you know, give yourself some time. Would, would you agree? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, you know, you were kind of an overnight success in this business, but not, not everyone is. I think that's unrealistic. Yeah, no, I mean, if, you know, for me and I, I have people that, yeah, it's, it's funny because I've noticed lately a lot of haters have come out of the woodworks with me um, because I'm sort of out there now on the internet and, and, you know, I'm helping people or doing things or I'm, I'm just, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm, I've got my hands in a lot of different things, but I've noticed that people tend to have a dislike toward me because they're like, oh, he's, he, what is, he's like Parker Lewis can't lose, right? Beautiful wife, beautiful kids. He's an okay looking dude, but he's got everything going for him. Um, and what's funny is I, I still went out there and tried and made things happen. Like I still took a $250,000 risk at the age of 24 to make it happen. Like it wasn't like I just ended up there. Right. Cause right. it's all about risk and reward. So, so it's not like, well, I'm an overnight success. I, I, I started with nothing. I mean, I had to, I had to get something. It wasn't like, oh, I, ha- I mean, I had to learn how to, how to, how to, you know, how to write HTML. I had to, you know, make ads. I had to learn how to outsource to India, all these different things that I, that I, at an early age, I had no clue about and I learned it. So, right, right. so yeah. don't, don't try to, don't try to paint me as Mr. Parker Lewis can't lose. I'll smack you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? And, and, and if we really analyze it, there's no such thing as an overnight success. You know, you and I, we paid our dues. We did the work. We stumbled through this and, and we made a lot of mistakes. I mean, a lot of mistakes, which, you know, we talk a lot about. So it's not like this is just a smooth sailing. And, you know, no one who starts anything does it ever go smooth sailing. And that's really the value of, you know, having a mentor is someone helping you through those rough patches and you leveraging their experience so you don't have to make those same mistakes so number five of stay motivated is get the help you need right so uh when things do get tough you've got somebody who can who can kind of help you and keep you motivated uh number six is predetermine how you will deal with flagging motivation right what what do you what do you do when you when you feel like, uh, I just don't want to do anything today. I go play basketball. All right. So you, you've got to tell you, you figure out a way to get a temporary boost. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do. And, and just so you guys know too, we believe, and I truly believe that exercise is so crucial to motivation, right? Because you get down at exercise, whether you, if you're playing basketball and you had a horrible day shooting, you still walk out there and go, I just probably lost a pound and a half. And I mean, I feel really good. I'm in, I'm in better shape than I was when I walked the door. So it, it is such a motivation just to work out, whether, you know, whether you're at the weight room, whatever you're doing, it, work out, stay in shape. It helps you. Right. I promise. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, so what about, what about you, Mark? What do you do? Oh, yeah. I, I know okay. So, I know what, what I, so, okay. So what, what typically what I will do is, uh, you know, in the morning, I'll work out, even if I don't feel like working out. I'll force myself to work out because I know like after I work out, I get, I get a, a boost of energy. Um, in the afternoon, uh, when I feel like there's some just 
afternoons where I just feel kind of run down. I'll go to Starbucks. I'll take a half hour break and uh, and just have a coffee um, and kind of re-energize. Or I'll call a buddy, you know, and uh, that I haven't talked to in a while and just kind of get my mind off of stuff. Um, I like to do that. And I like to meditate. You know, typically 3 o'clock every day, I'll take 10 minutes out and just meditate and breathe. And, uh, and then I get kind of a boost of energy and, and go on. So, you know, and, and there are some days where, you know, I'll just take the day off um, and just enjoy and just do something fun yeah. for myself. So I definitely, I'm not so hard on myself every single day. Push, push, push. You know, we, ebb, we everybody ebbs and flows and I kind of go with it. I don't, I don't fight it because I noticed in the yeah. past when I was younger, when I fought it, it just, you know, was terrible. And I ended up feeling worse and stressed out and, you know, inevitably taking it out on uh, the wife and kids. So yeah. number seven, the last way to stay motivated is continually check in with your reasons for carrying on. So, uh, you know, I love the quote Steve Jobs, right? And uh, mm -hmm. so he once told an interviewer, uh, I think most people that are able to make a sustained contribution over time rather than just a peak are very internally driven. You have to be. Because in the ebb and tide of people's opinions and of fads, there are going to be times when you're criticized. And criticism is very difficult. And so when you're criticized, you learn to pull back a little and listen to your own drummer. And to some, and to some extent, that isolates you from the praise if you eventually get it to. The praise becomes a little less important to you and the criticism becomes a little less important to you in the same measure and you become more internally driven. What do you think of that quote? A great quote. Great quote. Um, you know, I, I think uh, there's, 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 there's a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of power um, in statements like that and, and uh, certainly ring true in my life too. So what about you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, I love quotes. You know, I, I really do. That, that stuff helps. In fact, sometimes I watch uh, the Steve Jobs famous commencement address uh, to Stanford University. And, you know, he talks about how he how he's sick and how, uh, you know, he kind of lives, you know, day by day. And it's just really it's really special and motivating. Um, so uh, speaking of quotes, putting it all in perspective, right? This is a great quote from Dalai Lama. So Dalai Lama said uh, he sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he is never to die and then dies having never really lived. So that quote kind of gives me goosebumps. What about you? Uh, no, I mean, same, same, same with you. I pretty amazing. I, you know, I, I, I'm not really, I think, I think you are more affected by quotes than me. Um, only because my, my, my attention span, um, to actually think about it and dwell on the quote lasts about four minutes. Um, <laughs> and then I'm, and, and then I'm thinking about, you know, something else, but no, I, I love, I mean, quotes are awesome and they, they, they definitely stay, they definitely keep you motivated. All right. Well, great. Great. So, okay. Um, tip of the week. We're at that time. What's what's your motivational tip of the week? You got you got there's a, web, a web website or a, yeah, a book? You know, what do you, what a, do you do? I you know I'm not for for uh, those that know me well. No, I'm not a big book reader. Um, I just don't have the time to read books. I love I love to actually have the time, but unfortunately, I I just don't don't make the time, and that's just the way I am. So, but I love the internet. And I love reading stuff and, and getting information on the internet and gathering for my brain. But there's a website that sort of helps you train your brain. And it's a website called lumosity.com. What's the website? I just, I just coughed. Lumosity. L-U-M-O-S-I-T-Y. Lumosity. Lumosity. All right. Let me check that out. Lumosity. And, uh, sort of, sort of a training your brain. Maybe, maybe helps motivate you, keeps you on your toes. 
you know, if you have a, if you have a down moment where you're, you know, you're frustrated, you jump on something like this and you kind of just take your brain away from, away from the moment and you put it somewhere else. And I, I'm really a, a big proponent of taking yourself out of the situation, right? Why are you so mad right now? Why are you so angry? Um, that guy that just cut you off, um, he, he doesn't even know who you are. He just cut you off because he's a bad driver. Um, why are you, <laughs> why are you sitting, why are you sitting at home? Uh, and, and you're upset with your wife, you know, your wife, she, she's not trying to ruin your whole day. Uh, maybe she, maybe she is, but probably not. Um, put yourself, take yourself out of the situation, put yourself somewhere else and do things like this. Not don't go play candy saga on Facebook. Um, go, go, go train your brain, go take yourself completely up, away from everything. And this is one of those sites where you can do that. So. All right. Great. Great. So my, uh, tip of the week is a goal setting tip and it's an iPhone app and an Android app. And I love it. I use it and it's called Everest. So Everest is live your dreams. And, uh, you know, everyone's got their Everest, climb yours. And it gives you ideas of what to focus on. And again, it helps you chunk it. So it helps you break down what your big goal is and create step by step tasks. And then you can share it with others and be inspired by others. And I really love this app. And so it really helps you set your goals or your dreams. And, uh, you can, it's, it's really great. I, I really, I really recommend it if you've got one of these smartphones, iPhone, Android, Everest, live your dreams. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, going to be my tip of the week. So do you like my crowd, my, my crowd clapping there for your tip of the week? What's that? Did you hear that? Did you miss the crowd clapping for your tip of the I, I didn't. I, I didn't hear the crowd clapping. But uh, <laughs> you, anything else before we uh, are end our podcast? Anything else? On the, on no, your I think. Yeah, uh, you know, no, no. I just think that you know, it, it's it's a good it's a good topic to talk about motivation. I mean, we we could probably spend a three hour podcast on the different things that motivate Mark and I each day. Um, but but what keeps us going is creativity and new ideas and always thinking what what could I do here to change this? What could I do to change that? You've always got to evolve. Um, and as a human, um, as we evolve, um, we, we are always trying to do new things and not stay stagnant. And that's what motivates. So sitting in one place, being monotonous, not mixing it up. If you go to one Starbucks, go to a different Starbucks the next day, go meet some new people, change it up because change is good and change is also a motivator. I love it. I love it. Duran Frazier, thanks again for being on the Land Geek Podcast. If you want to get more Duran wisdom, go to landhub.com. Is that right? Landhub.com? There is uh, not very much wisdom on there. There's a lot of properties, though. A lot of properties, but <laughs> you'll, 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 get, you'll see what Duran's doing. Go, go to reserveland.com. Uh, and then, of course, download the Passive Income Blueprint for me for free at thelandgeek.com. Subscribe to the Coffee Talk videos on YouTube. Uh, go to youtube.com slash the land geek. Uh, sign up for the investors toolkit. Uh, that's on the land geek.com as well. Um, or the gold mastermind sessions where Duran, uh, some of my other top coaching students, we get on once a week and really get into the nitty gritty details of the deals that we're doing. Uh, and listen, stay motivated. So, uh, Dran, thanks so much again. This is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, saying make it a, another productive week. And of course, stay motivated. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.